Hey, it's Will from EDM Tips. Welcome back to the channel. And today I wanna to show you a more advanced mixing technique called parallel processing. It's one of those techniques that can make a real difference to your music and get it sounding really big, really fat and professional. And I'm gonna show you two examples of parallel processing, one on drums and two on vocals. So this is what we're gonna start with before the parallel processing. And this is the result we have after using the parallel processing techniques I'm going to share with you today. Now before we continue, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe for music production tips like this each and every week. And if you find this video useful, please smash like. I love that little blue thumb. I just love the color. Okay, without further ado, let's hop into the door and get this done. Now I'm using Ableton Live 11 today, but it really doesn't matter which door you are using. You could be using FL Studio, Logic Pro, you can do parallel processing in any door. So first I'm gonna explain what parallel processing is. So if you've got a signal running through a channel as per usual, so in this instance, we've got the drums. Parallel processing is where you take a duplicate of that signal and then process it separately from that original signal. And this allows you to do things like maintain the transients of the original signal whilst crunching up or compressing that parallel signal, allowing you to get the full fatness of a compressed drum kit whilst maintaining the transients of the original drums. Let me give you an example. Now there are two ways that you can create a parallel channel for processing. One is to create another audio bus and then to route the channel we want to parallel compress into that. The other and my preferred technique is to create an auxiliary channel, which gives more flexibility, which is why I prefer to do it that way. So in this example, we have our drums. They sound good, they sound nice and fat, but what if we just want a little bit more of energy out of them, make it sound a little bit more cohesive and gel together? Well, if we open up our return channels here, you can see I've created one and I've called it Paracomp for parallel compression. And to create an auxiliary channel in Ableton, you go up to create, insert return track, which is another name for auxiliary channel. And you can see here that this is auxiliary channel C. So if we go back to our drums, we can just feed some of that channel into the parallel channel. So let's just have a look at what happens. And this is just doubling up the sound. So this is off. So now we have the exact same signal that's been doubled up over here. And all it's done is increase the volume, which isn't much use. So if we now put a compressor on this channel, we can now compress it really heavily, way too heavily than we would like to on our normal drum channel. And let's have a listen to that. That's with no compression. And this is with heavy compression. You can see this ratio here and this threshold here. See, that's way too much for a normal drum loop. But what you can do is now just feed in a certain degree of the drums and the kick. And let's feed some of those drums into that parallel compression channel and see what happens. And the kick as well. And it's a very subtle effect, but this can make such a difference to the overall energy of your track as we'll see at the end of this tutorial. So this is with the parallel channel off. And this is with it on. And you'll hear it's brought up the details in the drums without crushing the life out of the original drums. And you see here, you could even put an EQ on after the compressor if you wanted to take out the low end. And you could even add some other coloration to these drums as well, like a bit of saturation as well. The options are pretty much limitless at this point. Now I want to show you the second example, which is parallel processing for vocals. So again, in this example with the vocals, I'm going to use a return channel or an auxiliary channel as my parallel processing channel rather than an audio bus. And there are a few other reasons why I'm doing this with the vocals, which just gives it so much more flexibility. 
and I'm going to show you that as well. So here we've got our vocals. You can see here I've actually got this being sent to four different send channels. So let's turn these ones on and then let's listen to the difference it makes. And what we're doing is doubling up this channel and applying different processing on each of these different parallel channels or auxiliary channels. The first of which is compression. So this, much like the drum example, means that I can just compress the vocals a bit more. Just to bring them out in the mix without completely killing the transients on the original vocals. So we already understand that because we looked at it in the drums example. Second thing I'm doing is a very popular way to use parallel processing for vocals, which is to have reverb. So we've got reverb on an auxiliary channel, but because it's sent to an auxiliary channel, we've got it 100% wet. And then we can feed as much of the dry signal into this to create the vocal reverb. The other beauty of parallel processing with vocals is that you can add things like sidechain compression from the dry vocals, which just ducks them and makes the lead vocals pop through the mix a bit more. So this is with that sidechain compressor off. The vocals get a bit washed out and all that reverb, so we can just choose the sidechain mode, take the audio from the dry vocals, and then add a little bit of compression. So this is what's happening. When she's singing, the dry vocals are just ducking the volume of that reverb a little bit so that the dry vocals pop through a bit more. And the last channel I've got is a delay for the vocals. And again, I'm doing exactly the same technique. We've got a delay unit set to 100% wet and then a little bit of sidechain compression from those dry vocals. But this last channel, I've got something a bit more creative going on. I've loaded up Soundtoy's little Alter Boy, which is a formant shifter and pitch shifter. And I've added this free Ozone Imager plugin just to spread it out and create some more stereo width. And then a little bit of EQ. And this just adds so much more body and weight to these vocals. So this is off. So all of the parallel press processing on for the vocals, it sounds like this. Super full, super polished, super professional sounding. And with everything on in the whole mix, we will we'll give you an example of the difference that the parallel processing makes. Now, I haven't actually just done this mix. I may have messed it up a bit, but let's have a little bit of a listen to see what the difference is. So this is without the parallel processing. And this is with it. Ready? It's bigger, it's punchier, it's more polished, it's more professional sounding, and that is the power of parallel processing. If you want to seriously improve your mixing techniques, you can download my free mixing guide below this video as well. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. It really, really helps me out.